Cavs could be the game of the year until next week when one of these teams has to play De La Salle in the NCS final. Both of these teams have already clinched a berth in the NorCals, but only one will leave tonight as NCS champion. However, the event staff gave them no response when they asked why they were getting kicked out, and they were escorted down the ramp and out the back of Mizzou Arena. Or he could just sit out next year completely and prepare for next year's NFL draft. However, his time as a Missouri Tiger is over. When I got this game, I realized that it's going to be a pretty quick game, and not because it's just going to be a blowout, but both of these teams love to run the football. When I asked Gabe Vargas why he liked the game of basketball, he told me it's kind of like chess. You need all these sorts of pieces to make all these moves to get to your final goal. But one thing he couldn't predict was he being one of those missing pieces. The Yellow Jackets are 5-0, and and they're not just winning their games. They're winning convincingly by an average margin of 48 and a half points per game. They'll need help from the most unreliable expert in all sports, the BCS. Each week, Stevens Creek Toyota brings the stories of athletes who have overcome adversity in their lives to succeed in school and in sports. Jack Washer joins us now with the San Mateo football player who has persevered beyond all odds. Robert, the San Mateo Bearcats all can learn something from Josh Vacava, run hard and be strong, something instilled into his mind on every play. Josh Vacava's face beams with determination on the football field. He plays tough and physical. Coaches and teammates say he's an example to follow. Just go straight. I tell all my teammates, you know, if there's like a wall over there, just go through it. And I just bite my mouth guard as hard as I can and just go, just go straight. That's all. Going through tacklers didn't seem possible three years ago. Josh wanted to play, but another fight kept him off the field. Ever since I was little, every year, like, it was always no, no, you can't, because you, like, it's because, like, cancer was, like, stopping me and stuff like that. Ten years ago, doctors diagnosed Josh with lymphoma and said 70% of his bones had leukemia. What, like, why me? Like, out of everyone, why me? After more than six years, Josh beat the cancer. But then he faced another obstacle. Just before high school, Josh's father, Hakodi Vakava, became sick with hepatitis B. Ball is given to Vakava. The 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown! A former University of Hawaii football player, Josh couldn't handle the sight of his father's sick. It was heartbroken to not only like our family, but like mostly the whole community, because he was such a hero for everyone over here. And what I took in it, like, I prayed every day, praying that he could get better. Josh's father passed away on May 1st, 2012. But he never forgets the one message his dad left with him. Before he passed away, um, one, th one of the things that he told me was basically be strong. <laughs> Be strong for everyone. In the fall of 2013, Josh finally received the news he wanted to hear. All of a sudden, like, they just said, yeah, you're clear, just as long as you don't get hurt and stuff. He hands Josh's pads and his helmet, and Josh, look on Josh's face, it was just, it was crazy. He, just, he was smiling, he couldn't stop smiling for the rest of the day, but he was happy. With the nod to play and the strength of his father with him, Josh Vacava showed us what it takes to fight and be strong. When things get down, uh, what are you going to do? And uh, Josh gets back up and, and, and plays a sport that, you know, is probably a sport that people said he shouldn't be playing uh, because of, of him being sick and, you know, and all that stuff. But uh, I think it's, it's good for him and it's good for everybody else and it's an inspiration for, for everybody. Now Josh is a starting running back for the San Mateo Bearcats, leading his team in rushing with better than 110 yards a game. Josh runs with a purpose, knowing life is precious and can be taken away at any moment. Number 17 is strong, taking his father's words to heart as he can finally play the game he loves, wearing the number worn by the man he respected. Well, yeah, his coach said it best. You can't tell he's been through anything. The smile, it never wavers from Josh, and he continues to do great things on the football field. Right, he lives at home with his mom now. It's true. He does live at his home. His mom actually quit her job uh, to take care of him when he had cancer, so big sacrifice by her. Absolutely.
The beauty in darkness is so often hard to see unless you look deep inside. Mauricio Rodriguez, a junior at Piedmont Hills, has his share of darkness in his life. But when you look closely, when you listen, you can feel the light illuminating from this talented young man. Want me to tackle you? Black team over here. Mauricio is also the manager of the varsity football team. The team, inspired by what Mauricio can do, knowing there is so much limiting his life. Honestly, I feel like he really is honestly the heart and soul of this team. You know, he always brings us together, especially on game nights. The fans love him, we love him, the coaches love him. I mean, it's just he makes this team what it is. Mauricio has autism, a condition keeping him off the field as a player. But being team manager is a chance for Mauricio to feel connected. It's very much fun for me because I have access to cheer on for the football team during games, during practice. I help out with a lot of things. When he leaves school for the day, Mauricio goes home to one of the roughest streets in San Jose. With a single mom and little money, Mauricio counts down the moments before he gets to go back to his second home at Piedmont Hills. He's very appreciative of having friends and having people around him to help him out, and I think that just keeps him happy, regardless of his situation at home. Going to Piedmont makes me comfortable. So I get free, I be free for all, from all the rough times back at home. And I found Piedmont better so that I could concentrate on what I'm doing. What makes Mauricio comfortable is music, specifically the piano. Mauricio is a musical savant, playing most of his music by ear. Whenever I hear a song, I could play it immediately. Well, it takes like 15, 20, 30 minutes or so just to get hear what the melody looks like. He just started playing. I think it was Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. And it was amazing. He just, and I just was like this the whole time. Over time, Mauricio has learned to read sheet music, but he says either way works for him. In our class situation, he'll hear other people playing something, and then when it's his turn, he can already do it because he's heard, maybe heard other people play it or maybe heard me play it. It's really a gift for musicians to be able to do it that quickly and with very little error. And yes, Mauricio is also a singer not holding back, no fear or anxiety, and that's the way Mauricio rolls. Music, like I said, music can be easy, hard, tough, difficult, even complicated. I've really enjoyed being mentally challenged by this. Through the love of music and the support of his team, Mauricio's life is a little bit brighter, his life shining with every song. From the Ford Sports Desk, KOMU 8 Sports. All right, more on that crazy finish in a moment. Wild day in Missouri sports. So first of basketball, Kim Anderson is a legend in the state of Missouri, born in Sedalia. He played under Norm Stewart at Missouri where he won the 1977 Big 8 Player of the Year with the Tigers. Now he's the head coach of the Central Missouri Mules, who today played for the Division II championship against West Liberty. Mules looking for their first title since 1984. We pick it up, first half, Central Missouri's Dylan Deck. He hits the turnaround jumper, part of a 9-0 run for the Mules. Later on, it's TJ White with the steal and the layup at the other end. Central Missouri up by two. But West Liberty would respond. Seeger Bonifant with a three of his own. Hilltoppers up one. Then it's Cedric Harris. He hits the mid-range jumper, giving West Liberty a nine-point lead. That would be the biggest lead of the game. But back come the Mules. First, it's Jordan Epps knocking it down from three from the left wing. Then next possession for UCM. Preston Bruns with a three off the screen. A one-point game. However, UCM would trail by two at halftime. Second half. Off the miss, it's Charles Hamor 
with the tip slam with some authority. It's a one-point game. Later on, three-point game. Good ball movement leads to another Eps three. He finished with 11 points, game tied at 60. Seven minutes to go, KC native Dalen Robinson. He hits the three, and the Mules were up by three after that. But Les Liberty would respond. Cedric Harris, he hits the long-range shot. Game tied at 68, but Robinson feeling it. He hits another three. The senior finished with a game-high 21 points. Anderson just loving it. Now a two-point game, but Hamork puts the game on ice with a three, and the Central Missouri Mules end their championship drought. They win it 84-77, and head coach Kim Anderson, well, he is just in a state of disbelief. What I just, I just said, did we win? Oh, great job, man. What a great game. Great defensive play at the end, which we talked about at halftime. We had to do a better job. Uh, no, I can't believe we're national champion. All right, back to the chaos at University Field. Last night, the Missouri Tigers softball team used an eight-run third inning to defeat the Georgia Bulldogs. Today, a little different. Going down to the final at-bat, to University Field we go. Casey Singel, the freshman on the mound for the Tigers. Bottom of the first, two runners on for Mizzou, and Mackenzie Sykes slashes one through the right side. That brings home Angela Randazzo, and it was 1-0 Missouri. More from Sykes later. Bottom of the second, runner on second for Mizzou. Sammy Fagan singles one up the middle. That brings in Taylor Gabboys. 2-0 Mizzou. Move forward to the top of the third. Georgia's Paige Wilson hits one to deep right center. That's good enough for a two-run homer, and that ties things up at two. Moving ahead to the top of the fourth, runner on third for Georgia, and they're going to get the sacrifice fly. Mackenzie Sykes throw just a bit late. Bulldogs would go up 3-2, and that would be the score all the way until the bottom of the seventh. In the seventh, Taylor Gavoys leads off with a chopper over to shortstop's head. And then she steals second. She's a tying runner on second. Later in the at-bat, Angela Randazzo, she rips one down the left field line. That scores Gavoys, game tied at three. Then, with runners on first and second, I said Sykes would do something, and here it is. How about a three-run walk-off homer? Mizzou scores four runs in the bottom of the seventh. They win in walk-off fashion, 6-3. A big win for Missouri and head coach Aaron Earlywine. We've lost so many of these heartbreaking games that uh, the law of averages was just bound to catch up for us to win one of them. And sometimes that's all it takes to get a team, you know, feeling good and confident and playing a little bit better. Um, it's just fun. It's, you know, it's, there's no other feeling like it. It's just fun to get a good team win. And that's that's all we wanted. You know, it, it wouldn't matter who hit that ball or if it had gone over, if it would have been a double, you know, whatever. Just as long as we got the win, um, that's all that matters. And former Auburn Tiger and Kansas City Royal Bo Jackson watching Missouri and Auburn on the baseball diamond. Mizzou looking for the sweep. Bottom of the first, it's Demek Tom Shea with an RBI single through the right side. Jordan Ebert crosses the plate. Auburn up 1-0. Move forward to the top of the third. Two on for Missouri. And Logan Pearson squids one just out of the reach of the second baseman. Jake Ring scores on the play, and that would tie the game at 1. Two batters later now for Mizzou. Runners on first and second. And Dylan Kelly is going to slap one into left field with the runners going. Eric Anderson would score on the play, and Missouri would take a 2-1 lead. However, Auburn would eventually get to Missouri ace Brett Grays. Bottom of the fourth now, two on, nobody out, and Auburn's Keegan Thompson singles through the hole in the right side. Blake Austin would score, game tied at two. Now two batters later, J.J. Schaefer for Auburn. He's going to bloop one into right. That would score Daniel Robert. And Auburn had a 3-2 lead. Now, next batter, look, Mizzou looking to get out of the inning. And this looks like to be a double play ball, but it goes directly off Graves. Shortstop has no play. Everyone's safe. Auburn out 4-2. They would add three more in the six and defeat Missouri 7-3. However, Mizzou gets the series win, taking two of three from Auburn. And that's going to do it for sports.